Hello, everyone. I'm super happy to be here. I have been uh, given the honor today to present the winners at the Amsterdam Hackathon. Uh, so basically, the Amsterdam Hackathon was an eight-week long online hackathon. So you could basically join it from any place around the world. Um, and we had uh, 20... You guys tricked me. Sorry? Let me... Uh, and we had uh, 20 bounties which, um, which were um, offered by uh, Polkadot and Kusama projects. Um, and uh, we made the choice of the best projects which we would like to uh, present to you today. But before I do that, I would like first to begin with a quick recap of Amsterdam. Um, so what Amsterdam was. So Amsterdam was an ecosystem event which was held in Amsterdam. Um, it took place from the 20th of April until 23rd of April. And it is an ecosystem event, which means that we all join forces together from different teams from the Polkadot and Kusama ecosystem to organize it. Um, so basically, I just want to say a couple of words of how this uh, came to being. Uh, so at Hydra DX, we had the feeling that an event is long overdue. Uh, we had the last in-person event before that was probably before the pandemic. Um, so we really needed some place where we can meet, we can gather, we can meet each other and also see what we do because uh, we had had parachains with Kusama for almost a year, but we barely knew each other in person and also I think that the parachain teams did not still have the possibility to sufficiently explore uh, various possibilities um, to collaborate with each other. So we took the initiative and we started reaching out to different teams and very soon we noticed that uh, actually these whole ideas were resonating throughout the whole ecosystem and we very quickly got many parties that wanted to join on board, um, which really helped make this event a success. So at Amsterdam we had uh, two parallel streams. The first stream was the conference stream where we have 32 talks from the ecosystem. Uh, those talks were recorded and are also published on our YouTube video channel and I highly encourage you to take a look because there are some really interesting talks there. Um, so we were basically aiming uh, at the whole specter. We wanted to have some seasoned Dutsama projects who have been uh, a parachain for probably almost a year and share their experiences and share their also future roadmap and what they'll be working on. Uh, but we also wanted, obviously, to offer the stage to some newcomers that could uh, present their uh, projects and ideas. Um, and actually, it was very, I was very happy to hear yesterday, I was talking to um, one founder of a project which was presenting an Amsterdam, and uh, he told me, yeah, it was actually very nice to have those recordings and to be able to have the stage, and uh, uh, this is a good way to share my project with the community. And after that, uh, they also mentioned, uh, to, they also managed to land a grant from the Web3 Foundation. So this is exactly the kind of impact that we are aiming for at those events. Uh, we would like to see events that take place during a conference or a workshop, um, propagate themselves into real life and add value to our ecosystem, which can be, it can be a new product, it can be a new idea, it can be a refinement of an idea, or it could just be uh, increasing the visibility of our ecosystem. I think any of those goals are uh, super welcome and uh, we should work towards them. So besides conference talks, we also offered uh, tech workshops, which were also organized uh, by the teams that were there. The difference between the conference talks and the tech workshops were that the workshops were much more in deep, so they were usually one to two hours long. Um, and there was beginner workshops for development in Substrate, but we also offered a workshop for front-end development uh, around Substrate, and there was also an XCM workshop. So those workshops were, uh, in a way, also um, arranged to be able to prepare some of the participants for the upcoming hackathon. So there was some knowledge that was also shared there. And uh, we were very happy to see many participants who had their laptops open and, and were hacking. And, we believe that a lot of useful information was, uh, was shared at those, at those technical sessions. And finally, uh, yeah, we just had a great time. Uh, we, had, we were aiming for 250 participants. Uh, we ended up with 356 participants who visited at least one 
in-person session. Um, and we also arrange the space in a way like similar that we have here the code that we would have the, the streams happening in, in, in the venue and the locations, but we also have a separate area where you could, you could take a break, you could meet each other, talk, and I think it worked out quite well. And uh, being here at the code, it, it is very nice to see so many familiar faces that we were able to see for the first time at Amsterdam. So in this sense, it was, I think, a special experience for most of us. So after the event uh, finished, we launched an online hackathon. Um, so it was, as I said, two months long hackathon, which just closed on June 20th. We had 20 project bounties offered by the various projects that were uh, co-organizing Amsterdam. And we also had one open category for anything Dutsama. So basically, if you have some solution which doesn't feel in one of those categories, we still didn't want to exclude you uh, from the possibility to at least get a piece of the, of the shared prize pool. Um, so they were combined, the, rewards, the, the reward structure is combined. Uh, it consists of two components. Um, so we had up to 190K as project bounties. So those are issues, mostly GitHub issues, that were opened by the respective projects in the repos, and anybody could hack. And some of them had first place, second place. Um, and then once you submit, you can uh, basically the judgment, the evaluation for this prize spot was completely, is completely up to the teams, and it's still ongoing. So uh, I am not presenting the results of this. Uh, what I'm presenting to you today is uh, the outcome of the distribution of the second component of our uh, prize. Uh, price pool, which was a 150k shared price pool offered by the Polkadot Treasury. And this price pool has been distributed by a jury uh, that had an equal amount of votes, uh, and the jury was consisting also by the teams that uh, organized Amsterdam. So we had 20 bounties and one open category. In the end, we got 15 hack submissions. Uh, I encourage you to go to our web uh, of, of the, the hackathon. It's on Dora Hacks. You can see the different submissions. And um, by visiting our own website of Amsterdam, you will be able also uh, to see the final results, which are still not made public. So I'll make them public just after this presentation once I get to my laptop. I didn't want to front run the excitement. OK, uh, let's get to it. Um, so I will present to you the top three. Unfortunately, we will not have time to go through all uh, 15 submissions, but I would like to say that uh, all submissions have been high quality, and actually 14 out of the 15 have received at least one vote, which means that they have received a piece of the shared prize pool. And we didn't arrange it in this way. We didn't want everybody to have like at least one vote. It just happened after honest jury voting. So it was very nice to see. So let's move on. Number three. Kintsugi X blockchain analysis, which was submitted by Mafox777 and Karen. So this is a dashboard which basically shows you vote information, information about Kintsugi votes. Uh, they have built this using Subsquid, uh, which collects data from, uh, from the Kintsugi and from the Kusama archive nodes. And they have added an additional squid specifically to, to, to uh, index um, the, the, the transfer data. So once they have this transfer data, they would, uh, using, uh, using uh, Python, they, they would aggregate it and basically get some insights out of this data. So in this dashboard, you can open and you can filter on selected votes, and you can see how much KBTC each vote has moved. So by this way, you can see the biggest votes, but you can also see uh, the biggest movers. And also very interesting is that you can also see the target parachain. So if the KBTC has left Kintsugi via XCM and went into another uh, target parachain, then you would see which one is this. So like, for example, what percent of KBTC did leave um, Kintsugi in order to go to Moon River. So this solution, uh, it got 11 votes and $16,500 uh, worth of DOT. Congratulations. <laughs> Number two. Vicky Vau and Yang Wao from CodaDot. <laughs> the 
they're also present here. Congratulations, guys. Um, so what, what basically they did was an implementation of Codadot. You know Codadot is an NFT explorer for Polkadot and for Kusama. And what they have did is to uh, add an integration of the Basilisk NFT marketplace into their explorer. Um, so this is a very nice bounty in, in terms of that it shows the versatility and flexibility that we have uh, when developing solutions in Polkadot and Kusama. Because uh, you can have one front end which can connect to different chains, like in this case, and also it allows users to perform similar actions, related actions with regards to NFTs. However, by using this one platform, it creates an abstraction from all the opinionated choices that were made when designing one or another NFT. Um, so this creates a very seamless uh, experience for users, uh, which feel like just as if they would be making offers or trading NFTs on another chain. But it also integrates some specific Basilisk uh, features, like, for example, royalty payments. Uh, once you meet an NFT, or you can also uh, set uh, a royalty fee, and every time it is transferred, uh, the, uh, the person who has the right to the royalty will receive uh, some percentage uh, as, as royalty fee, and also the possibility to make offers. Um, and this is not only very good for like, uh, teams that are focusing on front ends, but it is also very good for teams that are focusing specifically on runtime, um, because uh, this way, uh, we could actually use our quite limited front-end resources to focus on the main product which we're now pushing out we are in Basilisk, which is XYK pools. Uh, but by doing this and parallelizing work, actually, we could also get our NFT palette into, into use. So that's great. Thank you, guys. Right, and I'm super happy and excited now to announce the number one, the winner of the Amsterdam Hackathon, it's ANG and Entity64. They uh, actually submitted two bounties. Uh, the solution is called Morph, and they submitted Morph for Akala and Morph for Basilisk. So what Morph does, maybe it is a little bit unclear from this screenshot. Uh, it's not so much about the user interface and experience, but about what this tool can actually do. Um, so what you see here, uh, you, have the different, uh, you, ha you have different tokens. And, and you can see your balance, for example, AUSD, you can see your balance across all the different parallel chains. Because as you know, you, you can have AUSD as a native token on, on Karura, and then this can be transferred via XCM as a non-native token to Moonriver, Kintsugi, or Fala. Uh, and, and so far, it has been really a tedious experience to see what is your total AUSD balance, because you would need to switch to all the different chains and compare your balance. But with this tool, you have a very clear overview of like, okay, we have AUSD on, on Karura, and we would like, for example, to transfer it also to Fala. So this tool also, um, also supports XCM transfers, which is really great. And also for the Akala bounty, they also built the option to have KSM and transfer it from Kusama to Karura, and then also stake it so that you get LKSM. So uh, this is really groundbreaking, and I think it will be a, a stepping stone for some future development uh, efforts. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for submitting this awesome bounty, and congratulations. All right, I would like to round up with some learnings and takeaways for the future. Oh, before that, this is just the overview of, uh, of, of the top three. Uh, and on the bottom, you can also see the composition of the jury. So those teams have voted with equal voting power. So on to the learnings. Um, I think the first one is quite simple. Do more of this. We, we, we need to organize more uh, conferences, more opportunities to meet together, but also more technical workshops, more hackathons. I um, was actually discussing with uh, Alexei from Interlay yesterday. He had this brilliant idea that we should actually have one Polkadot and Kusama native platform where we will all the time post uh, bounties that are ongoing bounties. So you could post a bounty as a team, uh, but you could also maybe co-finance bounties that are helping the whole ecosystem. So for example, the XCM, you could have several projects that, that 
uh, jump into a bounty. And then obviously, if, if the solution is of use to the whole Polkadot ecosystem, I'm sure that also the Polkadot treasury will be happy to pinch in. Um, so, and ideally, this, such platform would also uh, directly support the possibility to vote uh, for the project and also direct payments so that you can also make the payouts uh, to the respective projects. The second learning is that we need lower barriers to entry. And this is especially applies to, to hackers and devs. Um, it is still quite difficult to, to enter the ecosystem and to start with your first, uh, with your first uh, project. Um, so there are several ways, that, several things that we could do. The first one is to sort of provide more intro courses into development around, in and around Substrate. I think that we have very good uh, courses for runtime development, but those are specifically tailored to runtime developers. And what we also would need is courses that are also targeting front-end uh, engineers, because um, currently we see actually a shortage of front-end talent, which is quite interesting because front-end development is quite a generic skill. However, uh, front-end development in Substrate is a completely different beast. And uh, so we would need to provide, I think, more courses that are specifically targeting the front-enders and abstracting some of the complexity away uh, so that it makes it easier to just jump in. And once you're in it, I think it is very easy to continue. The second point is that we should add dev-friendly docs to our code. And by this, I don't mean just like the auto-generated Rust documentation. This is very difficult to navigate for people who are not runtime engineers. So we should also provide documentation that is targeting also front-end development. The third point, I think it is very, very important. Uh, we, as parachain teams, should agree that we should use Rococo as our public testnet. So we should commit to having at least the latest version of, of, of our chain, of production chain, on Rococo, or maybe some experimental version, like with Basilisk, for example, we deploy on Rococo. Um, we remove some of the call filters with which we have excluded uh, some pallets from the actual runtime. And this will allow um, people to hack more easily, uh, especially if you consider that many solutions, especially in the future, are going to include XCM. So uh, if everybody of us has its own public testnet and ask other projects to deploy there, this doesn't scale, this doesn't work. It takes very long time to, to set up a testnet and to set up XCM and to register the tokens. Uh, so this should all happen on Rococo, and I think that this would be also like the go-to. This should be the go-to place for for hackers uh, in the Polkadot ecosystem. And finally, uh, we can also consider providing a basic middleware setup, because uh, by this we will also like lower the entry barriers for front-end developers, because they don't first have to understand how to set up uh, indexer and processors, but they can already have something that they can start with and build upon. Right, uh, those are the learnings. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thanks for everybody who came to Amsterdam. Thanks for everybody who contributed, who hacked, and thanks for everybody listening to this presentation. Um, it was a pleasure, and I'm looking forward to welcoming you in next year.